I'm Mike Cleary, and welcome to Happy New You. I recently discovered that I have ants in the brain. Yes, I know. A lot of you have been thinking that for a long time. Sadly enough, many of you are suffering from the same affliction. In his book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Body, Dr. Daniel Amen identifies the infuriatingly common scourge, the ant, which is automatic negative thought. Now, he describes this as these little voices that pop into your head and tell you that you're not good enough. A few ants, he says, can be managed, but he warns to watch out for the ant infestations when thousands of negative thoughts start to take over. Dr. Amen writes, negative thoughts can make negative things happen. Make a pact with yourself not to listen to your ants. If you do this, your thoughts will translate into actions, and those actions will cause your body to transform into the body that you've always wanted. Your body follows your mind. It has no choice. As an illustration, I'd like to mention a study that was conducted by Dr. Biagiato at the University of Chicago in 19. 96. It was an experiment on the power of the mind and how it related to playing basketball. Dr. Biagiato split a number of people into three groups and he tested each group on how many free throws that they could make. He then had the first group practice free throws every day for an hour. The second group simply visualized themselves making free throws. And the third group did nothing. After 30 days, Biagiato tested the three groups once again. The first group that had been practicing shooting free throws improved their accuracy by 24%. The second group improved by 23% without ever touching a basketball. And the third group did not improve, which was expected. The point I like to make is that the brain is incapable of distinguishing between what is real and what is imagined. The people who visualized shooting baskets improved nearly as much as those who actually performed the activity. The brain could not distinguish the difference. How often have you awakened from a dream thinking that it was real? I've related stories to people about events that took place and conversations we've had only to have them look at me like I was imagining things. I must have played the scene in my mind and convinced myself that the interaction actually took place. That's why ants on the brain can be so destructive. The mind doesn't know if what you're thinking and saying is the actual truth or not. Doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy. The brain takes every thought as being real. Likewise, we have to be consciously aware of our use of sarcasm and humorous insults. I once read a post on social media where the person lamented, 
I need a sarcasm font. Imagine someone taking dictation from a person who's speaking sarcastically and then reading it back to them. That is exactly what the brain records. It doesn't understand when you're being humorous or not. Take, for example, the science teacher who said, two positives do not make a negative. And a student in the back of the classroom sarcastically retorts, yeah, right. The same rule holds true for self-deprecating humor. When you insult yourself, even in jest, your mind records it as the truth. If it hears the same message enough times, it begins to believe it. Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu was quoted as saying, watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. And watch your character, for it will become your destiny. There's a statement I heard years ago. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. This means if you constantly dwell on negativity, what will you have in your life? <laughs> you guessed it. Some people gripe about the glass being half empty. And to them, the glass will never be full. Well, I have some news for you. The glass is never half full. The gla em half empty glass of water is half full of air. So it is, in fact, completely full. Automatic negative thoughts. They can creep into your minds without your knowing it. Well, here are some of the ants that may plague us from time to time. First is all or nothing. This is the black and white thinking that leads you to believe that everything is either all good or all bad. Good illustration of this point is lawyers, used car salesmen and politicians. Not all of them are all bad, just as not all doctors and clergy members are all good. Try not to throw a blanket of negativity over a particular group based on a stereotype or a personal bias. Another is using always, never, every time or every one. Never say never. Put a ban on overgeneralized words. Another ant is focusing on negatives. Try to put a positive spin on anything you can to raise your mood. This is something that my wife Sharon and I work on as much as possible. Whenever something unfortunate occurs, we try to see the good in it. We believe that everything happens for a reason. Even the bad experiences have something to teach us. Another ant is thinking with feeling. When you assume your feeling about something is true, <laughs> you may not question it. Think with logic instead and look for evidence to support and challenge your view. A negative thought may have been planted from an old belief or viewpoint that has no basis in fact. Another ant is fortune-telling, <laughs> predicting the worst, even though you don't know what will happen. The problem with fortune-telling is your mind is so powerful, it really can make these terrible things more likely. Tell yourself, you don't know what the future holds. 
Instead, be curious about the future in a positive way. Mind reading. <laughs> this is when you think you know what someone else is thinking. In truth, you have no idea what people are thinking. If someone looks at you, it does not necessarily mean they're judging you. I know that I can get defensive when I take exception at how a person looks at me. I believe I know what they're thinking. And in return, I judge them based on what I think is going through their mind. All of us have a few ants on the brain. The trick is to learn to identify them and not let them become an infestation. In her book, Three Reasons to Stop Worrying About Your Negative Thoughts, Liza Asiel wrote, Happiness doesn't depend on how few negative thoughts you have, but on what you do with the ones you have. Lisa Seal lays out ways for keeping those pesky little ants at bay. The first is, it's normal to have negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are a normal part of human functioning. This means you don't have to worry about the fact that you're having them in the first place. No matter how gnarly they get, it's all pretty normal. The second is, you don't have to believe your negative thoughts. Your mind would like you to believe that all of your thoughts are correct. Well, one of the ways it does this is by having you think that you and it, your brain, are one. The truth of the mind is, your mind is just one part of you. It isn't all of you. Think of yourself as being made up of four parts. The mind, the physical body, the heart, and your spiritual aspect. And this means that you are not your mind. Your mind is just a tool for you to use. And our point number three is you can get positive about negative thoughts. When you jump on negative thoughts and reject them in a knee-jerk kind of way, you're saying to yourself, I'm not good enough. If I was good enough, I wouldn't have had that thought in the first place. People say, thinking positively is the way to healing. But the quickest way is to first attempt that except that the only reason you feel bad in the first place is because you're listening to the rubbish that's going on in your mind that's telling you. If we know that ants are based on faulty beliefs, then why not just simply ignore them? Well, Eckhart Tolle wrote, whatever you fight, you strengthen, and whatever you resist persists. We all have negative thoughts from time to time. It's human nature. The next time a negative thought pops up, acknowledge it and then set it free. Treat it like it's an unsolicited opinion. I appreciate your input, but I choose to do something else. Thank you anyway. As with Dr. Biagiato's experiment, the mind doesn't know the difference between what is imagined and what is real. Don't allow ants to linger, and eventually you'll find yourself having less and less of them. Well, as I mentioned on this show many times, that happiness is a choice that we make. Well, also, a sense of freedom is another thing that we choose. Freedom is a choice. And this song is, I'm free. Can't 
Can you see the sunrise over the mountain? Can you see the eagle in the sky? We're unbound like a mighty rolling river Flowing by, flowing by Can you see the lightning split the darkness? Pounding thunder like the waves upon the sea Well, these are all my sisters and my brothers Like the wind, oh, I am free I am free In our lives We have problems We have worries We have sorrow We have strife Don't let concerns Blind you to the beauty And make you miss The miracles of life Come embrace The promise you've been given there's so much more that you are meant to be. All your fears, like the seasons, they're fleeting. Wipe your tears and share this day with me. Can you see the sun rise over the mountain? Can you see the eagle in the sky? We're unbound like a mighty rolling river. Flowing by, flowing by. Can you see the lightning split the darkness? Pounding thunder like the waves upon the sea. Well, these are all my sisters and my brothers. Like the wind, oh, I am free. I am free. We are free, we are free. We'll be right back after these announcements. Hello. I'm Mike Cleary, host of Bella Vista and Beyond, and Happy New You. Like many Northwest Arkansas businesses and organizations, Bella Vista Community Television experienced a voluntary shutdown in the latter part of 2020, affecting our regular programming schedule. As a result, you may have noticed many of our programs had been rerun over the last few months of the year. We here at Bella Vista Community Television take COVID-19 health guidelines very seriously. We chose to close the station for several weeks rather than place our staff and guests at risk of exposure. In 2021, we are resuming our normal programming schedule with new sets, new hosts, and new shows while continuing to practice social distancing, wearing face masks, and routine sterilization of our set and studio equipment. All of us here at Bella Vista Community Television appreciate your viewership of our original programs, highlighting businesses and organizations in the Northwest Arkansas area. Our shows listing can be found in local newspapers and on our website, bellavistatv.org and bellavistatv.com. You can also view our programs on YouTube anytime you want. Along with those of you viewing our original programs, we would also like to thank and acknowledge our loyal members who subscribe to BBC TV and who offer financial support to the station through their generous contributions. You too can support the station by visiting our website, bellavistatv.com, and click on the Donate button. 
or you can set up a monthly contribution through PayPal. We will continue to offer interesting and entertaining shows to Bella Vista visitors and residents, and we look forward to providing the same quality programming as you've come to expect from us in the past. Thank you for choosing Bella Vista Community Television. Welcome back to Happy New You. And thank you for tuning in to Bella Vista Community Television. You know, I've been playing music for many years and performed in many bands. One of my favorite groups was a band that I started with a friend, Jim Jarrett. It was called Paper Jam. One thing about Jim, every time he picked up a guitar, he wanted to play Stairway to Heaven. Well, if you're familiar with the song by Led Zeppelin, you know that it's not exactly the kind of music that lends itself to any venue that a typical band might play. Whenever I think about Jim playing that song, I'm reminded of a scene from the movie Wayne's World. Mike Myers, who plays Wayne, picks up a guitar in a music store and starts playing Stairway to Heaven. The store owner taps Wayne on the shoulder and points to a sign on the wall that says, No Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> As a band, we never played that song for a show. The song is long, the melody is kind of convoluted, and most of the lyrics are vague, incoherent ramblings. The general gist of the song can be summarized in the first two lines. There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. Too often, people believe that their happiness, their heaven, in a sense, can be found in the possession and accumulation of material things, that we can buy a stairway to heaven. Folks mistakenly believe that joy can be found in obtaining things. That's why they label compulsive buyers as shopaholics. Constantly purchasing things is like drug addiction. The activity only providing temporary pleasure. The happiness quickly fades and they have to get more things in order to feel good again. Shiny new cars, flashy jewelry, new furniture, new clothes. These give only fleeting satisfaction and must be continually replaced and upgraded. Wanting what you don't have. Personally, I like to indulge in some chocolate or cookies, you know, every now and then. But my wife Sharon, and me too, for to some extent, are trying to watch our carbon calorie intake. So we try not to keep those sweet items handy and available. However, not having something <laughs> often makes you want it even more. It's a strange phenomenon about wanting what you don't have. Sometimes people yearn for something their whole lives, imagining how wonderful it would be to have that job or that car, that particular item or that person in your life. However, their perspective changes once they actually have it. Here's a quote from the episode Amok Time of the original Star Trek series. Leonard Nimoy, as Mr. Spock, dryly comments, after a time you find that having is not so pleasing a thing after all as wanting. 
It is not logical, but it is often true. We often have a fantasy or an illusion about something until we try it. I once went to Six Flags Amusement Park near St. Louis with a group of friends. One woman begged us to ride the wooden roller coaster. None of the others wanted to go, so I volunteered to accompany her. The ride was so bumpy and rough, I thought some of my feelings would come out of my teeth. Afterward, the woman groaned, I'll never do that again. I guess to her, wanting turned out to be much better than having. Like the song Jackson, where Johnny Cash and his wife June Carter Cash sing, We got married in a fever. <laughs> Things turned out different than what they expected, and after a while, the excitement wore off. Sports figures experience the same phenomenon. They feel a letdown after they reach a level of accomplishment. They no sooner complete one level of competition than they set their eyes on the next challenge. Wanting what you don't have is usually a good thing. It motivates people to strive for success and encourages them to become better human beings, to be more than they were before. But wanting can also have a negative side, like when a desire becomes an obsession. Wanting money or material things can make a person focus on personal success over the consideration for others. Wanting affection or love from another can also be unhealthy. Want, wanting what you don't have in a person can only lead to unhappiness and resentment. People are also under the assumption that happiness can be found after <laughs> a particular future event. When I'm finally out on my own, I'll be happy. After I graduate, I'll be happy. Things will be great when the kids move out. <laughs> when I retire, I can finally enjoy life. They think reaching some sought-after goal or milestone will bring happiness and are sadly disappointed when the result delivers less joy than they expected. As you know, when we were children, we saw the world through the eyes of a child. However, our perspective changes as we mature and we have more life experiences. What we wanted then may not be what we want now. Take a moment to evaluate what it is that you truly want in your life, in a career or in a relationship. What do you want to see in yourself? I believe the group Led Zeppelin got it partly right. The route to happiness, or your own personal heaven, if you will, is indeed a stairway. One does not remain content in one place all the time. <laughs> Things change. People change. Life is not static and stationary. It is in a constant state of flux, and we must continually shift our perception to find happiness as it reveals itself to us. As the singer Miley Cyrus reminds us, life is an upward struggle, and the reward is found in the climb. The truth of the matter is you can't buy a stairway to heaven. You make it. You take it one step at a time. Sometimes it's scary taking that leap of faith of knowing that 
The next step will be there when you need it. But taking that step on your own, doing it yourself without having to buy or entice it to you, guarantees more lasting joy and a more tangible heaven. I, of course, have a song. The song is about coming home to yourself, about feeling that inner guidance that we all know is inside of us, like a candle in a window. Sometimes I wander, sometimes I roam, sometimes I feel oh so all alone. It's times like these, ooh, that's when I need a candle in the window to lead me home. We all get lost, oh, from time to time. Ask for guidance is no shame. That light I feel inside, it serves as my guide, like a candle that'll lead me back home again. They say not all who wander are lost, but at times I feel so lost inside. It's when I look for the light. That single flame in the night that serves as my strength and my guide. So at those times when I stray too far away, I find my way back eventually. There's always that light to guide me through the night, that candle in the window just for me. They say not all who wander are lost, but at times I feel so lost inside. It's when I look for the light, that single flame in the night that serves as my strength and my guide. So at those times when I stray too far away, I find my way back eventually. There's always that light to guide me through the night, that candle in the window just for me. There's always that light to guide me through the night, that small candle in the window just for me. Thank you for joining me for Happy New You and have a fabulous day.